And then uh, question number five is when someone finishes tapering off prednisone, would they still be in the high risk category for a certain period of time? So just to give you a bit of context of where all of this prednisone came from. So this actually predated any data that we had in the IBD um, community. What happened was in China where the epicenter started, um, what happens is there are people who, most people get a fever and a cough and, and they recover at home. Then a subset, and, and the early numbers showed it was roughly around 20%, end up being hospitalized. And of those who end up in hospitalized, they end up hospitalized because the um, infection goes into the lungs uh, and causes difficulty breathing and low oxygen levels in the blood. Um, and a subset of them develop what's called an inflammatory response to their lungs. So it's not so much even the virus attacking their lungs, but it's their immune system overreacting and attacking the lungs. And that leads to, um, some people call this a cytokine, cytokine storm, which means that there's a huge inflammatory response. There's a condition called ARDS, which is where your lung fills with fluid because of this inflammatory response. And that's when it ends up people who have very difficulty breathing and they need to be in an intensive care unit on a ventilator. To breathe and so a number of different um, different anti-immune system therapies have been tried to help that specific group the people who have gotten sick enough to end up needing to be in an ICU setting and so early on they tried prednisone because prednisone is an anti-inflammatory and it settles down inflammation anyone who's been on prednisone because of a flare recognized that's why we, pre we prescribe it but in that population the people who were given prednisone did worse uh, they did not necessarily have IBD they were actually given the prednisone to treat their lung condition and things got worse. So that gave us the first signal that this there, there could potentially be harm. And because of that, from a state of caution, we, we right, right back eight, 10 weeks ago said, you know, we should be avoiding um, minimizing the exposure to prednisone. The data from the secure IBD registry, which I showed you earlier, also confirms that people who are on prednisone are more likely to have a bad outcome than those who are not on it. And similarly, there's an analogous rheumatology registry, very similar to the IBD one that I showed you, um, that looks at conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, which also uses many of the same drugs that IBD patients have. Uh, and in that registry, they've also shown that prednisone is a risk for rheumatoid arthritis patients. So I think there's a consistency in the data to suggest that um, prednisone is, is a risk factor. Now, there is a, uh, a specific dose effect to it. And we think that this high dose prednisone is the highest risk. And the cutoff that we've identified is around 20 milligrams. So above 20 milligrams, what we're trying to do is to reduce that dose. You know, you can't stop prednisone outright because your body's um, prednisone is essentially cortisol. And if you were to stop it, you become cortisol deficient and you can get really sick from that. So what we're trying to do is taper down. And in the inability to be able to get you down off of the prednisone, that's where we like to use the word shielding. And what does shielding mean? It means being home isolated and not only protected from the outside world, but also shielded in your home. And that would be the scenario where you would want to be very careful about your other members of your family who could potentially be sick coming there. So they want to be taking those precautions to minimize your risk if you're on prednisone because the truth is during this pandemic, people are going to still need to be prescribed prednisone. They're very sick if they're very sick with their IBD. And so we have to balance these, these risks of the IBD against the potential risk of COVID. So once you get down below 20 milligrams, we do believe that those risks drop. And it's a combination of getting lower and off of the prednisone and that you get better as well. And so the key is that we're using another therapy to reduce the dose of the prednisone. Um, and that other therapy, whether it be Remicade, Humira, Stellara, Zelgens, uh, Vitaluzumab, and Tidio, all the different drugs that are, are at our disposal, we're using those to get you off of the steroids and those other drugs we are not seeing signals that they have the same harm that prednisone has. Hopefully that makes sense.